you have one of the Canon cameras, whether it be the R6, the R6 Mark II, the R5, and you wanna shoot in C-Log3. And that's fantastic because with C-Log3, we're able to capture more dynamic range in our image, which allows for a more pleasing image. But the thing is, C-Log3, when you shoot in it, it's very hard to tell whether you have proper exposure and whether your colors are going to be accurate. This mainly has to do with the fact that when you're shooting in C-Log3, or in any other log format for that matter, the image is compressed to be more flat with less saturation and less contrast. Without further ado, these are things you need to know when shooting in C-Log3 on your Canon camera. So first off, exposure. Since we cannot trust the LCD monitor on the back of the camera, how are we supposed to judge exposure? You have two options. You can use an external monitor to judge exposure with those exposure assist tools, or if you don't have an external monitor, you can use zebras inside your Canon R6 or R6 Mark II. Zebras are black and white stripes that appear on your image based on the brightness value of that image. And you can actually set these zebra patterns to appear at certain brightness values. So if you're going to be exposing for people, you wanna set this to 55%. When you do this, zebra patterns will only show up on the parts of the image that fall between 50 and 60% brightness. If you're not filming a subject, but rather capturing B-roll of objects, you may actually want to judge exposure by using a gray card. A gray card is something like this, and it's exactly what it looks like. It's just a gray piece of card. <laughs> so all you're gonna do is actually change the zebra value to 40% and change the exposure such that the whole gray card is covered in that zebra pattern. Once you have the gray card completely covered, you know your exposure is set perfectly for the scene that you're in. Last but not least, so you're not just going constantly back and forth between the menu, you can actually set the zebra to a hotkey on your camera. I like it on the front button next to the lens on the R6 and the R6 Mark II. All right, number two, actually working with these C-Log files and a little preparation. So you might now be excited that you have this really high quality footage, but working with it in an editing software is actually very heavy on the processing. Of course, if you have a really high-end computer, this may not be an issue and you can feel free to skip this. But even on a higher-end computer, it would just be nicer on your processing and you probably have a smoother experience if you use proxies. Proxy files are low-res preview files that your editing software uses to edit instead of the actual main file. So how do we do this? It's actually very simple. In Adobe Premiere Pro, import your footage. Once you have all your footage imported, you're gonna actually select all of it, right-click, and go down to the option that says create proxies. A dialog box will pop open and you can change these settings to whatever you like. I personally use DNX HDR or whatever the Windows version is. You also have the Apple version, which is Apple ProRes. And I like setting the resolution to about 720 because I don't want these files to be too big either. I like also making sure to check the box that says create proxy folder next to the files so that everything's organized. Once you're done, it will actually open Media Encoder and begin uh, creating these proxy files for your videos. Now, when we're back on Adobe Premiere Pro, you can actually check this box that allows you to use the proxy files in the project. If you don't see this icon in that menu selection, you can actually hit plus and then find the icon and add it there. Now you're gonna be able to work with these C-Log3 files very easily and smoothly, even if you have a very old computer. All right, and finally, we're going on to color correction. As you'll see when you import the footage onto your editing software, the image is still gonna be flat and without saturation. Now, you can actually go in and edit these files one by one, but what I recommend doing is actually downloading the LUT that Canon gives us for free. If you go to the Canon website, onto any camera model that actually has access to C-Log, there'll be an option to download their LUT presets. Follow the instructions and download it for the proper operating system that you work on. You are gonna to wanna to move these files somewhere that you have easy access to, so I put them in my documents. Now, in Adobe Premiere, we're going to create an adjustment layer. The reason I use adjustment layers is so that I don't have to constantly apply this LUT onto every individual video file. Instead, I apply it to the adjustment layer and then layer that over all the footage that has C-Log3. But which one do you use? When you download these files, you'll see that there's a bunch of folders with a bunch of different LUTs. Well, it depends on what you shot in. So for my settings, I actually shot C-Log3 and in the color space, Cinema Gamut. So when you're going through the LUTs, make sure you select C-Log3 and Cinema Gamut. And then based on what you want to convert it to, you have Rec 
709, REC 2020, and then YDR, and a few other options available. I personally found that the REC 709 conversion LUT looks the best, but feel free to experiment and try different options and see which one you like the best. The specific REC 709 LUT I grab is actually from the 33 grid folder, which once again, I think looks the most pleasant. I've tried 65 and it just didn't look quite as good. And there you have it. Now you're working with a color corrected C-Log3 footage with a high dynamic range. Do you have any tips for working with C-Log3? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you really liked this video, maybe check out this camera tutorial here and I'll see you next time. Ciao.